Hello, everyone, and welcome to Highwire Improv Tuesday evening shows. If you're in the U.S. Uh, on the East Coast, it's potentially considered evening. Some people would consider this late afternoon. I consider it evening, and we are very excited that you are spending some of your evening either tonight or in the future with us. Uh, we have a wonderful improv program for you this hour. We've got two great acts for you. Uh, you're going to enjoy them very much. Uh, kicking off the hour, we are excited to have the return of All Request Radio uh, with the Velvet Duke, a uh, fantastic show that has been performed in person, online, in many venues, but has been uh, not on the high wire stage in some months, and we're very excited to have it back. And we are then going to have uh, the high wire debut of Sharon and Darren, a wonderful group uh, out of the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, looking forward to that as well. Um, before we get started with the, the programming this evening, uh, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we will have a bit of input for this show. So if you're watching live, uh, I'll be dropping a link into the YouTube chat uh, right now uh, that includes the opportunity to uh, make a request for our songs uh, that will be coming up on uh, the, the first half of this block. Uh, I will also uh, mention that we have uh, a number of awesome in-person activities happening this week in High Wire World. Tomorrow, we have our weekly in-person jam at the Roland Park Community Center at 7 p.m. Uh, information and registration is available on our website. Uh, and this weekend, we have a show and workshops uh, featuring uh, a guest, uh, Brian James O'Connell from uh, LA and the PAC Theater will be joining us for shows and workshops. You can get all the information for those also on our website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Eventbrite, and YouTube are our most prominent social media hubs and where you can get the most information. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you at some of those events. Alongside that, we of course have all of our online shows this week, tonight, Thursday, and Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then back out of the following week. So lots going on as always, stay in the loop and we are excited to see you here. All right, uh, with that uh, brief intro, I am now going to uh, introduce our very first show. As mentioned, it is All Request Radio. It is from the Velvet Duke. They are a multi-talented performer. They're doing some musical improv tonight. You're gonna really enjoy it. Please sit back, listen and enjoy to All Request Radio. This is All Request Radio, CKVD 99.5 FM. Get your requests in. We will play your top 10 favorite made-up songs. If you give us a real song, we're not playing along. We'll give you just a half a minute to get those in because we have to get started. We may also hit you with some news, weather, and sports, depending on the timing, depending on the request. In the meantime, this is Slippery When Sloppery. Coming to you live on CKVD 99.5 FM. This is CKBD 99.5 FM. This is All Request Radio. And we're ready now to get into your songs, your top 10 songs. Let's bring on our DJ. Come on, DJ, don't be shy. 
Hey everybody, I am DJ Velvet Painting. You are listening to Slippery When Sloppery. Now you're not. Now we're turning that off. I uh, hope you all are doing well. So good to be back here on the airwaves. We have your top 10 uh, calculated, tabulated, and we're going to be uh, sharing those with you in just a few moments. Uh, now, because of the time space we have, we're not going to be able to get to all of your songs. Uh, we'll show you them, but we won't be able to sing all of them. Uh, so. If you see your song go by, still applaud for the songs that made it. Let me just, oh, oh, I'm excited for what that might be. We will all find out together uh, about this program. I don't know the backing tracks until they start playing. I don't know your made up titles until they come up on the screen. So this is a treat for all of us. I hope you're ready because I am, here we go, coming in at, uh, let's go to the countdown. Did that change anything? It didn't change a single thing, so let's do it here. Here we go. Uh, oh, number 10, the artist for number 10, are the Request Landers, Simply Rock. This is going to be a rock song coming out from the Request Landers, a local Baltimore group. They have been uh, doing the rounds, all of the clubs, and uh, this one has hit the airwaves. Let's hear this song. Uh, this is Ode to Coffee. Uh, thank you to, to Michael. Let's just hear a snippet of Ode to Coffee. Oh, yes, that is definitely Ode to Coffee, the Request Landers. You'll love that. But let's uh, let's keep this music going just for a second. Let's not. I'm trying to do six things at once. I'm going to switch the screen for number nine. Number nine is Parabola Bloater, this pop song. Don't throw in the towel. Thank you, Camilla, for giving us our number nine song. Let's hear number eight. Oh, Approach Correspondences. Oh, nice to see them back on the charts. If you are a lover of soul, go check out. They have a, a compilation coming out, and this song is definitely on, and I learned to knit from Angela. Number seven is uh, The Linker. Now, I uh, like The weekend. Just one person behind The Linker. Uh, definitely a new standard in funk. Uh, the Linker song is Lego Man. Lego Man. Uh, thank you. All Request Radio is your number one song. Let's see number six. Cranberry Cranium. Mm, another fun song. Love to see it on the charts here at All Request Radio. Their song is Quit Now, You've Done Enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we will see a, a recap of those. We have uh, the copy, Don't Throw in the Towel, I Learned to Knit, Lego Man, Quit Now, You've Done Enough. I'm ready. If you are ready to share your number five song, let's find out together what that is. Millionaire Gymnasium. Millionaire Gymnasium. Oh, I don't know much about this band, but if they are uh, the epitome of soul, as people in the office have been saying, then I'm looking forward to, to hearing what it is that they, uh, they've put together with their song, Who Will Kiss Saturn? Queen Chica, thank you for putting this one out. Who will kiss Shattern? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all wondering It's one thing to be over the moon To feel your love like soon but you can do better, oh. you can do better, oh. it's one thing to be high in the sky, feeling your heart going so high, but I know you can do better, you can do better, show me the lover who's going right out there, show me the lover who's willing to take me with them. And kiss Saturn. Who will kiss Saturn? I need to know you got it in you. 
like the rocket to help you zoom zoom. Who will kiss Saturn? Oh, I'm not settling for staying on the ground. Oh, I want a love that is oh so profound that we're kissing Saturn. Oh, I never want to learn to settle for the love that's boring and contemplating all the snoring. No, Ooh, I want to lose control. Oh, I'm going to ask each and every of you who's got a space person for me that can do these things to lift us to heaven. A 7-Eleven It's one thing to go to the moon I understand the pitter patter in Zoom But I want to go higher And that's what I aspire Who can find me someone like that Someone black I want to know if it is exact Who can do it be us through it. He's got the power and the stamina to get us through the atmosphere and all on. Who will kiss Saturn? I want to kiss Saturn. Who's got what it takes to make my heart quake, make me make mistakes, make me forsake this planet. Take me up through the space. Think I can handle it Here we go I can feel it and know Oh yeah Like a rocket out of control And I can see in your eyes That you realize we do it for each other Here we go We're up there We're past Mars, past Venus, past Oh, we can see the stars oh, And kiss inside Order them around the really soon That was your number five song who will kiss Saturn? Thank you to the Millionaire Gymnasium for creating what a wonderful, soulful song to kick off our top five to the top one countdown. And thank you, Queen Chica, for uh, recommending that song to us. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. Let's get to the number four song. This is CKVD, All Request Radio 99.5. Number four song. Thank you, Billionaire Gymnasium. We're going to hear from um, Pork Arbors. They are pop indie darlings. You may not have heard them yet, may not have made a reach past the eastern seaboard, but they are coming up, and this is an example of why that may be true. Uh, this song, Snowstorm in March. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for sh shouting that one out. We are definitely experiencing that here. Uh, I said there'd be news, weather, and sports, and here's an example of it. You know, it's always nice when the song uh, represents what is going on around you. Let's fix that for you, Jennifer. Uh, this is Snowstorm in March. Uh, you don't need to see that, Tricia. Let me rewind the music. This is a fun song. Not fun to experience in real life, but in song, here we go. You think I'd stay home, but I got a mission. I know where I'm going. Meteorologist said wear light boots today. You can do all the things you want, go out and play. Here's the snowstorm. I'm not getting warm. I don't want to be a snow person living in a snow porch. 
This is a snowstorm. Lousy smirch. Oh. I see the sky lifting. I see the snow go away. Will the snow, will the sun help it, help it stay? Or is a breeze flowing, bringing more? I can't handle it. It's such a bore. I don't want any more of these snowstorms. I want to go back to our springtime norm. But here we are in the midst of it. I feel like I'm having a snow fit. I just can't get over it. No storm in March. I'm never getting warm. <laughs> I should have said a March snowstorm. March snowstorm. I'm never getting warm. Freezing every extremity. I'm gonna be like a heater, wearing too many layers. I'll be the one like the puppy with the whiskey on the neck. I'll be the hero of our neighborhood, shoveling as I go. I can't wait for April when we won't see any snow. That was a snowstorm in March from the Pork Arbors. Thank you, Jennifer, for giving us that song. Moving on to our number three song. Number three, we have the Chandler Apricot, uh, this soul group. They uh, they first got together in '98, and uh, and they you know quietly they were making quiet hits in the local scenes, and then uh, in '98 uh, at the end of '98 they had a breakout song, and uh, and this is it, it is hot grease will leave a mark, uh, Queen Chica. Thank you for this shout out. This is hot grease will leave a mark. Channel wrap. Yeah, yeah. I need you to know if I understand you got the heat I understand you want to move your feet But if you're trying to win the competition to gain your lover's love You gotta know you can't be cheating Cause that won't help you know Oh, there's always reparations And there's lots of keys When your partner finds out You're gonna be in the heart breeze oh. Our grease will leave the mark, we'll make you smile, we'll take you apart. You've got to go smart with your heart, you've got to let them know that they are the only part. Oh, our grease will leave the mark, I'm more than your soul. Oh, our grease will let everybody around, you're paying the toll. Hot grease, mm, you don't want that on you. Hot grease, come on, come on, see it through. That was hot grease leaves a mark. Wow, uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, I I love that song. It, uh, it helped me correct a few wrongs in my own life. Uh, thank you very much, Chandler Apricot, for that one. Our, we're hit here with our number two song, The Hopelessness Bank. Oh, uh, The Hopelessness Bank. Yeah, all of their music is acoustic. It is quite wonderful, and it makes sense that they remain the number two artist here 
six weeks in a row. And uh, with this song, I burned the toast again. Angela, you are absolutely not the only one who has ever experienced that. Let's get into our number two song for this week here on All Request Radio 99.5 CKBD. I'm sorry. I adjusted the time and I thought This is the third toaster I bought I tried to take the gluten away But I just burnt the toast again I will matter for when I see one I see your bags at the door I know you're leaving I want you to try once more Maybe put butter on it Some apple butter too Any kind of butter that we can put on So you can't taste through I want the butter again I wish that weren't true. I burned the butter again, and then it's hurting you. I'm sorry, ah, maybe I just don't make that part of the breakfast no more. I can do the eggs and you won't be so. If you make this one chance, then I make my vow. Then I won't burn the toast no more. I give up anyhow. I see it better fall when I see one. I was burning the toast again. That brings us to our number one song here on the All Request Radio. Thank you very much for all of your requests. Thanks for playing along. This is from Either Dentist. Uh, oh, they do R&B between all of their cavity searches. Nope. Cavity searches was something they removed from the press releases very early on. They realized uh, this is uh, your number one artist on All Request Radio. And they're singing Hot Mom. Hot Mom, here we go on All Request Radio. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, I see you in the grocery store. You are one hard man. Let me reach the green corn for you. Let me do whatever it takes so I can be beside you. I know sometimes it don't add up to be true Not just talking cause of your smile But your energy, the way you move I can tell you got it together And I wanna be together with you A hot mom, you know what to do I just lost my mind for a second, but let me convince you that I've got what it takes. True, I'm a human, and sometimes I make mistakes. But I'll communicate as I can and let you know I'll be there for you. Oh, not just because you're a mom. This goes out to you I'm not trying to butter you up That's in aisle too Just want to be there for all my life Maybe make you my heart wide Yeah, that's right, I'm dancing in the aisle beside you Oh, excuse you, you can go around, I'm not leaving, no, no. I won't lay down, 
My name is Reginald. You're the hardest one I found. I can tell by the way that you're calculating. Oh, that you're not no longer waiting. You're living your life, and I like that too. Even as your kids reach through the eye, I can see your patient smile. That's why you're a hot mom. That was Hot Mom, your number one song here on All Request Radio. I have been DJ Velvet Painting. You want to get these uh, recaps, you absolutely can find them on uh, the Velvet Duke Instagram. There's your top six, uh, top 10 to six, and your top five to one. Who will kiss Saturn? Snow storm in March. Hot grease will leave a mark. I burned the toast again. And Hot Mom, we'll see you next time here on All Request Radio on High Wire Improv. Oh, it is so great to have All Request Radio back on these YouTube airwaves. Thank you so much to the Velvet Duke. Uh, if you want to see more of what they're up to, uh, go to thevelvetduke.com or look for the Velvet Duke on Facebook and Instagram, as mentioned. Uh, lots of amazing shows, including that one. Uh, thank you, as always, and looking forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Uh, all right, let us move into our second uh, act for the evening. Uh, we have, as mentioned earlier, a High Wire Improv debut. Really excited to bring uh, these folks out. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Sharon and Darren. Woohoo! Yay! I know you're all just rapturous applause at home. Thank you so much. There you go, Stacy. Stacy's got it. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Stacy. This is Heather Marie. And together in improv, we are Sharon and Darren. We won't tell you why. Uh, we're gonna do a real fun make em up show for you today from our own homes, our own individual homes. And to get us started, we are just looking for a word of inspiration. So maybe a word of something that inspires you. Give it a second. Ooh, a frap. Frap, I like that, a frap. Thank you so much. I Thank like you our show. Uh, you know, I know they say to not get high on your own supply, but I just love making coffee and drinking it. I uh, love it. I know that half my paycheck goes to this, but I just can't stop. I can't either. When I smell coffee in the morning, I know I'm making it for other people, but I know that I'm also making a little extra for myself, if I'm being honest. Wait, <laughs> what? Are you, are you stealing from this Starbucks? Sharon, it's not stealing, it's just extra. It's extra. I don't know why you would tell me this, your shift manager. I'm... I'm a week on the job. I can't like let stuff like that fly. What? Sharon, you, you've just met me. What do you mean let it fly? This is the way it is at Max. Starbucks. Max, no, it it's not. I mean, not at this store. I mean, you've met you've met the general manager. He's he lets nothing slide. And the the reason why I'm in this job is because Shelly just got canned for letting stuff like this happen. So you, you got to stop. If you want that extra coffee, you have to pay for it. Be like me. Get like an auto deduction out of your paycheck. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Pause. You get an auto deduction out of your paycheck for how much? I won't say. But it's enough that it's kind of embarrassing. Okay, wait, this is ridiculous. You work here every day and you don't even treat yourself to some leftover coffee. You pay for it. Yeah, that's that's what Mr. J says that we have to do. Honestly, I think all of that just goes into his pocket and not back to the Starbucks. Then he's stealing. 
but I can't prove it. You know what? I don't need proof. I'm not paying for coffee I make. All right. I have to write you up. And well, you write me up and you tell Mr. J, look, I'm pouring it right now. And just tell Mr. J that I'm doing it and I am not going to stop unless he takes the money out of my hand. This because pains me. This pains me, Max. I've heard so much about you when you transferred to this store that you were this wonderkind of coffee. And now I know why you're stealing it. I'm sorry. I just, I, I can't lose this job. I need the health insurance. You think I don't need the health insurance? You think I don't need a job? You're acting like it. I'm acting. I'm doing what's right here. I, you are selling out to corporate. I'm a voice of the people. I thought we were going to get along. And now, now this. You're right. God. I used to be like, you know, Frig the man. I can't even say the word. Fuck. Oh, like, screw the man. The, everybody for the proletariat. Bourgeoisie. Down with the bourgeoisie. I was like a little bit of a socialist. <laughs> and now I'm a shift manager at Starbucks. Hey, bring some coffee right now. Drink it. Don't, don't account for it. Drink it. I, that was your write-up. Consider it gone. Oh, thank you. Mmm, <laughs> coffee. The coffee of victory. Oh, yeah. I can sense a revolution is coming. Oh, well, Captain, you know, I trust you. It smells like union outside. Oh, the unions. It smells like a mutiny. Oh, mutiny, you say, Captain. Do you not agree? Don't you hear the pain of those workers? Don't you hear the shuddered whispers of the crew and the shifty glances and the <coughs> loser? <coughs> oh, Captain, come on. You're not a loser. The guys are just... They're just kidding with you, Captain. Uh, I, I know I'm not a loser. I have very high self-esteem, but... I don't know about that second part. That ki Captain, I have worked on ships for my entire adult life. I'm 85. Let me tell you... You, this is why you are my second in command. Yes, you know what? I never really could make it up all that way. But there's something that I learned, and it is even when you think something bad's gonna happen, nine out of ten times, it's in your imagination. Take a deep breath, it's gonna be all good. I got to tell you, Smee, that my nine times out of ten is the one out of ten. Every voyage I've taken, something has happened. Oh, my God. There was, the cur there was the cursed mermaid who crashed our ship. There was the bout of scurvy. There was the submarine incident. So what is this one today? I think it's the union. Oh my God, Captain. Maybe that means your bad luck. You can't say that. Yes, the common denominator on all of those voyages was me, but you can't yes. say that. That's what I'm saying. 
I mean, listen, I'm not one to call someone bad luck, but as a sailor, we're very superstitious, and I think, uh, I think you might be bad luck. Scary, scary bad luck, Captain. Oh, scary. Now I'm seeing danger from everywhere. That jib is not cut tight enough. It could hit me in the head. That board is too creaky. Those waves are too high. That land is too far away. Wait, land. Oh, it's land, Captain. <laughs> what say you, Smee? What land is this? Shall we name it after us? And by us, I mean me? No, oh, but Captain, remember your bad luck. If you name the land after you, it will be cursed. Captain, trust me on this. I'm very old man. You don't want to name the land after you. What if the land is cursed and I leave all of the crew there and I take the ship? Well, you can come too. Ah, we'll take the ship away and they can either die or prosper on the cursed land of my name. Well, Captain, what would that accomplish? I would feel really good about it, but only for about a week and then I'd probably feel pretty bad. Well, that doesn't sound like a solution, Cap Captain. Captain, Captain. We're not setting foot on that island, trust me. Trust oh, me. We've been looking for any sign of land for weeks now, and this is the first one. Unless it's another cursed mermaid, a big cabal of cursed mermaids trying to get us to go and crush. Well, Captain, the common denominator here is you. You seem to cause these problems. But you are the captain and I'll follow you. What good is it then if I'm cursed? If you're the good luck that you have been a sailor nigh on 85 years, but maybe not so blessed that you're still a first mate. Maybe, maybe you're right, Captain. Maybe, maybe I have done some bad things out here on the open sea that I don't like talking about. Name five. Well, once I lost a compass overboard and it was an anti-compass from the 1800s and I lost it and I pretended I didn't know what happened to it. I feel a lot of guilt about that. Uh, well, treasure's going to be lost. That's not so bad. One. That was one. I, I, I touched a jellyfish because I wanted to see what it felt like, and I touched it with my hand, and then I was in the hospital for three weeks because it was it, the the scar that I got the burn was so bad. Mm. I've had a run in with a jellyfish too, son. I know how much it hurts, and I'm sorry I called you son. You are forty years older than I. I am old. I'm an old man. What is, what is the third? I got married on a boat, but then the boat sank and everyone drowned. You lost me. your lass? I How lost did you my lass and my, I survived through the power of good luck. I somehow was able to float on a door all the way back to shore. But how many people tried to go on that door and you took it up? and they sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Almost everyone tried. Oh, even your lass? Yes. Hmm. I do know why you, I can understand now why you would not share that one. That is fairly horrendous, me. It is pretty bad. That doesn't seem like good luck. That just seems like assholery. So, number, so what, number four. The problem? You might be the problem. What's number four? Number four is we once stole a bunch of money from a pirate ship, and I said that I was going to put it in a bag. 
And I accidentally left the bag back on the pirate ship and we went to our original ship and sailed away. And then everyone said, where's the bag? Where's the bag? And I couldn't, I couldn't find it. And then I remembered it was back on the pirate ship, but of course we couldn't go back there. So everyone was so upset. Yeah, so that is pretty bad. Because why else would we want to sail these beautiful and deadly seas if not to find land mermaids and treasure? We are the uh, official pirates of the of whatever colony has sent us here. Somehow I'm beginning to think that Buford Land is not real, and the letter that I got sending me here was not real. Oh, Captain. What is the number one, Smee? The number one bad thing that I've done is that for a very long time, about 18 months of my life when I was a younger man, I wanted to develop a way to become immune to poison ivy. So every day I would rub it all over my body. And it got to the point where the boat was just filled with all of these bushels of poison ivy. Anyway, you know, one of the crewmates started poking around in it. And he gave it to someone and they gave it to someone else. And pretty soon the whole crew was incapacitated. But I was fine. Hmm. So it seems to me that maybe it's you. You're the problem. It's you. It's not luck. It's just that you are rather self-focused. Captain, I, I am, I'm surprised at you. That anyone, if you add their worst five moments together, it sounds bad. But those five moments since I was 18, I mean... I don't know. Perhaps you are the common denominator. Maybe you are the common denominator. I think we're both the common denominator, so let's go to land. I was you. Mondays, am I right? <laughs> I've never met a Monday that I've liked. <laughs> Very true. Can't wait for it. TGIF. <laughs> what? What was that? I'm ready for TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, it's an acronym. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, technically, it's it's an initialism because acronyms are ones that are uh, both abbreviated and a uh, word like radar, but. Well, that's a really, I, well, no matter what it is, that's really cool. You came up with that on your own. I didn't. It's very famous. <laughs> well, if it's famous, I would have heard about it, you know. Well, did you watch the. ABC lineup of young adult programming on Friday nights called TGIF starring, let's see, Boy Meets World and perhaps Step by Step and maybe Full House and other things. Oh, uh, my family and I, we don't believe in television. What do you believe in? Quality time. Ooh. Mr. J, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? Because I broke your first rule. I didn't crack down. One of the employees just convinced me to to, to forsake my duties, my sacred duties as shift manager. All right, what'd you do? How did you ruin this company? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I just, 
the young employee, I shall not name him, he was drinking extra coffee, making some just for himself and not paying for it. I'm ashamed. I tried to write him up and I, and I threw it away. You know what, Sharon? I am not disappointed in you. Really? I am disappointed in myself. Because clearly I haven't explained to you how narrow, razor thin our profit margins are. That's so shocking. This is the most popular store in all of Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's what we want them to think, Sharon. Starbucks, you know what? It was cool. It was hip 20 years ago. We're not doing so hot, Sharon. We need every single cent to keep this company going. Well, here, um, this will cover what he stole. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the money out of your pocket. It's not enough, but it will do just fine. Are, are you... The employee, I, I won't give his name, but it starts with an M and ends with an X, and there's an A in between. Uh, this, no, 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 I don't know. No, it definitely not him. Um, he he suggested that you are stealing from us, that all these extra, this deduction I do for my auto deduction for my coffee is that um, I'm supposed to get free coffee and that you're actually just stealing from us. Is that right? Are you stealing from me? Did you just steal again from me? Is that going in your pocket, Mr. J? Mr. Sharon, J. when you look at me, I want you to see the company. I am Starbucks. So the money went into my pocket, but I'm representing Starbucks. I, 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 I stealing your money. This is ridiculous. Do you steal money when you buy something from Starbucks? Are you being robbed when you get your coffee? I mean, if it's made poorly, am I right? No, but it, it goes in your pocket. That just means it goes to you. You're not what, paying it out of your pocket. So you're I, just taking money and doing nothing with it except bolstering yourself. But I am Starbucks. I'm Starbucks. You're not Howard Schultz, Mr. J. Who is Howard Schultz? <laughs> Just the founder and head of Starbucks? Is this all a dream? Are you just a bunch of mermaids? I, I care more about Starbucks than Howard Schultz. How? You know what? You don't even know who he is. I am Starbucks. I am Starbucks. I sleep here. I eat here. Everything I care about is here. I, my family is coffee. My children are coffee. I am Starbucks. Me. Not Howard Schultz. I can tell you that. Not him. Is that why there's always like wrappers on the floor of the wake in the the wake up sandwiches? It's just you're eating yeah, them. That's all I eat. That's what I fuel myself with. If you were to cut me open, my blood is Starbucks. Man. Uh, I think. I think it's time for me to leave. Sharon, where are you going? You're a shift manager. I think I should just go to like Dark Matter Coffee. Because I, I, I think they it's just le less problematic. Oh, I get it. You don't want problems. Well, guess what? Uh, yeah, at Starbucks there are problems, but there's also solutions. We're not just coffee is what I'm trying to say. We're a lifestyle. You I can either get in this whirlpool or, or get out. We don't. It, it sounds like your lifestyle is actually very sad and that you sleep on a cot in the back storeroom of 
a pretty gross, if I'm being honest, store. Well, I'm happy. And isn't that the best thing? Isn't it? I'm happy. I'm Starbucks. I have been petitioning corporate to replace the lady that's in the logo with this face. The mermaid? Here. The mermaid in the logo? I don't know what, exactly what she is, but I want me. She's a mermaid. Well, how does that make sense? They don't drink coffee. But they do lure you in. Land ho, me. It is land. It is not a bunch of mermaids. It's... I don't know. Star... What is a Starbuck? Four Starbucks. Well, it looks like a mercantile to me. It looks like a little general store, if you ask me. Good, we need more provisions because we are full. We are about to be full of scurvy again. It's not on me. You it's... are the one who was supposed to get all the oranges. Well, maybe I'm, maybe the common denominator is me. It is. It is you. It's always been you. Well, I said maybe, maybe it's you. We will have no way of knowing unless one of us is not here. And I'm not saying not that here. to try to get one of us to not be here. Are you sure? Captain, what are you doing? Captain, go, go away from me. What are, I'm old man. All I'm saying is maybe you should look over there. Why? <laughs> Goodbye, Smee. Goodbye. No. Goodbye. He was 85, but perhaps that is too long to sail the seas. He's with the mermaids now. <sighs> On to this Starbucks. Thank you, that's our show! Oh, Thank you. wonderful. <laughs> what a wonderful debut from Sharon and Darren. Uh, thank you so much. I feel like that was better than Titanic. Um, and I would have preferred watching it. Uh, I don't care what the Oscars say. Uh, thank you all so much for, for joining us this evening. Uh, we will be back online uh, Thursday with some more shows. Uh, as I mentioned, we have in-person uh, jam tomorrow at the Roland Park Community Center, uh, and that begins at seven o'clock. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Highwire Improv, on 